Good afternoon and uh, welcome. Uh, we will have uh, statements by the Secretary General and then the President, and then we should have time for a couple of questions. Secretary General, please. President uh, Surabajvili, uh, dear Salome, uh, welcome back to NATO headquarters. It's great to see you here again. And your, your presence uh, demonstrates uh, once again the close uh, partnership uh, between uh, Georgia and uh, uh, NATO. Georgia is uh, one of uh, NATO's uh, most important uh, partners. We have uh, a close political partnership and strong practical uh, cooperation. Despite the challenges uh, of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic, NATO and Georgia continue to strengthen our partnership. And today's meeting of the NATO-Georgia Commission, uh, 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 we will take uh, stock of our achievements and assess what more we can do uh, together. Last year, we upgraded uh, the substantial NATO-Georgia package. Uh, this helps Georgia to implement reforms, enhance its ability to operate with allies, and continue to contribute to our shared security. Our key priorities include secure communications, and actually the President and I discussed that during the meeting uh, today, training and exercises, and enhancing our maritime support uh, and situational awareness. Today, uh, we will also address the security situation in the Black Sea region and Russia's continued military buildup. NATO supports Georgia's territorial integrity and sovereignty within its international recognized uh, borders. We continue to call on Russia to end its uh, recognition of the regions of Kassia and South Ossetia and to withdraw uh, its forces. And I took good note of the ruling by the European Court of Human Rights. It confirms that, uh, that Russia is uh, responsible for human rights uh, violations in uh, Abkhazia and South Ossetia, and that Russia exercises control uh, there. It only strengthens our uh, call uh, for Russia to comply with international law and respect Georgia's territorial uh, integrity. In our meeting, uh, we also discussed the progress uh, uh, Georgia is making on the reforms. This is crucial because progress on the reforms brings you closer uh, to our shared goal, membership of NATO. Today, uh, we addressed uh, Georgia's commitment to our research support mission in Afghanistan. Georgia has uh, long been one of the largest tro troop contributors to NATO's training mission. We appreciate the professionalism of Georgian men and women in uniform, and we honor the sacrifices you have uh, made. So, Madam President, De Salome, uh, thank you for being here today and for your strong personal commitment to NATO and to our partnership. NATO's partnership with Georgia makes us all safer and more secure. So please, welcome. Thank you very much, Mr. Secretary-General. After almost a year when uh, COVID has uh, diverted most of uh, our attention, uh, has constrained in a way diplomatic activity, uh, time has come to center again on our core interests, uh, around our common values of solidarity and our common projects. Uh, and I'm very glad to have the occasion at the beginning of this year uh, to be here again uh, and to, uh, in that way, show how much our priority for uh, Georgia-NATO relation uh, and cooperation is more than ever uh, actual. Uh, facing old and uh, new challenges, uh, we need all to look forward. We need new energy, uh, more movement, and uh, more determination. Uh, a number of factors uh, push us in that direction. Uh, the fact that a new uh, American administration eager to reaffirm uh, its ties to, to NATO and its presence, uh, we hope, in the, in the Black Sea and in the region is very important. In our region, we have seen uh, con new configuration of forces, uh, which uh, shows that even more than ever, 
uh, the Black Sea and the, and the Caucasus uh, are becoming more important for security and should uh, draw even more attention and presence from uh, NATO. Uh, new challenges uh, um, ask to be overcome together. Uh, of course, COVID-19, but also cybersecurity, uh, disinformation, and the continuation of the conflicts that we see on our occupied territories, to name some of those, need us to join forces. We hope and call for the solidarity from our partners, individually and collectively, when fighting these common challenges, including the pandemic, notably through allocation of vaccines, or when trying to defend ourselves from renewed and more and more frequent cyber attacks and destabilization attempts. Despite the pandemic crisis, despite uh, the conflict in our neighborhood, despite uh, the occupied territories and the increased uh, provocations and efforts towards de facto annexation, Georgia has maintained stability, not only on its territory, but around it in the region. Georgia has stood firm, has pushed its agenda of consolidating democracy internally through reforms and elections, and has proven once more its resilience. We value the constant support of our partners and of you, Mr. Secretary General, to our territorial integrity, to our sovereignty, and to our strategic orientation. Georgia has continued, thanks to this cooperation, to enhance its defense capabilities, to increase standards and interoperability, and to develop the practical tools that prepare for membership. Georgia values the importance of continued NATO exercises on its territory, despite the constraints of the pandemic, as we have seen in 2020, we value the increased presence in the Black Sea and the port calls. We value the importance of solidarity in taking our share of the burden of collective security through our participation to NATO-led operations. We are more ready than ever to increase our efforts and performances and are grateful for the trust towards our country's aspirations. The new refreshed SNGP is a demonstration of that and a valued tool raising the level of our cooperation and tailored to all these new security challenges. But we need more. We trust the recommendations of the NATO 2030 New Era report will be taken up. Aspiring Georgia has shown its dedication to reaching the ultimate objective of integration and on that path its resilience in front of the new challenges. Time has come for the Alliance to have more solidarity and more audacity. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Okay, we have time, I think, for two quick questions. Uh, first of all, we go to Levan Achalaya from the Georgian Public Broadcaster. Uh, thank you. Good afternoon, uh, Secretary General, Madam President. I'm Levan Achalaya from Georgian Public Broadcaster. So my question is for Secretary General. Your US president announced the plan for strengthening the alliances with partners recently. State Secretary nominee wrote NATO door is open for Georgia if it can contribute to the Atlantic security. Give us more an understanding of what do you expect Georgia do? Thank you. First of all, I very much welcome the strong commitment uh, by the United States to rebuilding alliances and also working with uh, uh, partners. And uh, uh, I cannot speak on behalf of the uh, new US administration, but I, I know uh, President Biden as a strong supporter of the transatlantic bond and Georgia is part of uh, that transatlantic bond, uh, uh, North America and Europe working uh, together. And the United States have over many years pushed for uh, strengthening the partnership and uh, the United States has also uh, clearly supported uh, the NATO decisions we have all made together, uh, uh, also on the uh, issue of uh, membership of uh, Georgia into NATO. I think what we have to realize that is that despite the pandemic, we have been ap uh, able to continue to strengthen our uh, political and practical cooperation. Um, uh, we have had a substantial um, 
uh, political uh, dialogue over the last year uh, with meetings of the NATO Georgia uh, Commission. Uh, last uh, September, I met with uh, the Georgian Prime Minister, Georgian Foreign Minister, and also NATO's foreign ministers met with Georgia's Foreign Minister uh, 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 to discuss Black Sea security. Um, and then, as the President uh, referred to, we have uh, uh, strengthened our substantial uh, uh, package, uh, so we can also further strengthen our uh, practical uh, cooperation. We have the NATO liaison uh, office in Tbilisi. We have the uh, Joint Training and Evaluation uh, Center. And uh, with the enhanced package, uh, we are focusing on uh, different things, but including the implementation of secure uh, communications projects, continued support to the Joint Training and, uh, and Evaluation Center, and uh, uh, more NATO Georgia exercises in 2022. Uh, on top of that, we will also uh, uh, further strengthen what we do in the maritime domain. And NATO has provided some support to your Coast Guard. We are now looking into how we can further uh, strengthen that cooperation. What Georgia can do is to continue to implement reforms. Uh, we need uh, uh, strong uh, democratic institutions. Uh, we need uh, 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 to make sure that we have modern and uh, capable security institutions and, of course, civilian control over both the military and the intelligence services. On all these issues, we are working together, and, uh, and reform uh, is the key uh, uh, effort, the key uh, uh, task for Georgia as you move towards uh, NATO uh, membership. We have time for one more question. We'll go to Terry Schultz from Deutsche Welle. Thank you very much for your time. Um, uh, Mr. Secretary General, um, the, the New START Treaty, despite uh, the U.S. intention to ask for an extension, isn't a done deal yet. First of all, are you concerned that uh, Russia may come up with a reason not to extend, despite it, it, it signaling that it, that it also wants to extend for five years? What are the stakes for European allies if, by some chance, the last remaining nuclear arms control treaty would fall apart? And above all, are you concerned about being able to verify the treaty um, despite the, uh, the the mechanisms that are built into it, um, we've seen treaty after treaty crumble because of a lack of trust between uh, the West, the U.S., and Russia. Are you worried that, once again, there would be violations that could be dangerous for Europe? And, Madam President, I would also uh, be interested in, in your thoughts on um, having to keep alive this last remaining U.S.-Russian arms control pact. Thanks. Uh, yeah. I welcome uh, President Biden's announcement uh, uh, and his intention to seek uh, an extension uh, of the uh, New START uh, Treaty. Uh, I have uh, stated repeatedly that uh, we should not uh, end up in a situation where we have no uh, agreement, no limitation whatsoever on the number of uh, nuclear uh, warheads, and therefore uh, an extension uh, of the uh, New START uh, Treaty is important because Unless it is extended, it will expire on the 5th of uh, February. Uh, NATO allies have made it clear that they uh, all support uh, 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 the New START agreement because uh, it has been uh, of so, such a great importance for all of us. Uh, NATO has been uh, on the forefront of arms control for decades. And, uh, and uh, 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 we have seen the demise of some other treaties, including the INF Treaty, we should uh, avoid and prevent the demise of the uh, New START uh, Treaty. Having said that, uh, the, uh, uh, an extension of the New START uh, Treaty is not the end. Uh, uh, it should be the beginning of uh, renewed efforts to strengthen international arms control, uh, to look into how we can cover uh, more weapon systems and also include more nations, uh, for instance, uh, uh, China. Uh, I call on Russia to respond in a positive way to uh, the U.S. Uh, uh, proposal. Uh, this is a bilateral agreement between the United States and uh, Russia. The United States has uh, consulted uh, closely with NATO allies uh, on uh, the new start uh, and the, uh, the possibility of extending the treaty. And, I, and I'm confident that uh, that the United States will continue to consult uh, closely with allies on arms control in general and New START in particular. 
verification is of course of great importance. So as we uh, work on how to strengthen and enhance arms control, uh, the issue of covering war weapon systems, the issue of including uh, more uh, nations, but also of course verification will be one of the key issues that has to be addressed uh, in the future. Uh, as for us, of course, we are not part to uh, any of those discussions, but it's very clear for a small country and a small country in the region where we are, and especially at this time in that region, uh, that whatever constraints the militarization uh, of the region and of some of the uh, big powers that are around us is very important. Uh, arms control is always a positive development, but knowing, as we know, uh, Russia from closer, uh, it's very clear that uh, what is key is monitoring, is verification, it's not taking words as granted, uh, and uh, at that, under that condition, it becomes a very important instrument for which uh, we would be very uh, thankful uh, if that happens, but with maximum control. Okay, I'm afraid that's all we have time for. Uh, thank you very much, Secretary General. Thank you, Madam President.